great to be with you. So let me offer a professorial welcome. And the first thing that I'd like to say is congratulations to the China um, Business Club um, in London Business School that has been able not only to go ahead with the long scheduled and long awaited meeting, but also to adjust to new technologies and to ensure that we have the record number of participants and also the recordings that will be available for those who are not in convenient time zones. It's a great pleasure to be here, but I don't want to take any more of your time other than introduce our uh, panelist, uh, Carl Song, and it's a great pleasure to see Carl um, virtually um, again. Uh, Carl is a vice president and is responsible for communications in Huawei, one of China's most important technology firms. And we're going to speak about a very hot topic. And it's hot because uh, it is something that COVID-19 makes it even more relevant. It has to do with the way that we can use communication technologies um, and it also relates to how one of uh, China's technology icons, uh, much loved by some, and as we know, much pushed against by others, uh, is coping in this difficult environment. Carl, it's always a pleasure to see you, and the floor is yours. Please share with us your thoughts in terms of uh, uh, technology overall, and then we'll have the opportunity to go a little bit deeper in the ecosystems that you guys engage in after your talk. But let me seed and welcome and thank you very much for taking the time to be with us. Thank you, thank you, Michael, for your uh, introductions. It's uh, a great pleasure to be here to join this webinar uh, for myself. Uh, and uh, today, uh, first session, I will give a keynote speech to introduce uh, how uh, Huawei as a tech giant, uh, what we are thinking, what we are doing, and what uh, we uh, during this very tragedy uh, pandemic, uh, how uh, the big tech giant as well as to, to support the people, support the society to better fight against this uh, terrible uh, virus. So first, I think I will uh, share my screen. Uh, I don't know is, if it's okay, yeah. you? We can see your screen, okay. it's not, an, and now we see it perfectly. Yeah, so the, the topic today I will share is a tech for good during the COVID-19. Uh, actually, while we, uh, last year, we initiative uh, by our rotating chairman uh, program, Tech for All. But uh, during this very uh, dangerous pandemic, we think tech technology is for good. Um, so <clears throat> as, a snapshot for today uh, by the WHO data, uh, this pandemic is hit over 4.3 million people around the world and more than 200 countries and areas is impacted uh, by this uh, dangerous virus. Uh, it's a global uh, crisis. Uh, it's most dangerous for our decade. Uh, from uh, a various point of view, <clears throat> there's no rich people, poor people, uh, black people, white people, Asian people, uh, Latin American people, uh, powerful people. So for them, we are a human being. All the people in the planet is the same. We need a good collaboration between the countries. We need a good uh, technology uh, to, to help, to support, to fight against coronavirus. We still has a memory about 100 years ago uh, when 1918, uh, the Spanish influenza is happened. It take around 15 million uh, humans life uh, dead uh, at that moment. Uh, today, uh, thanks for we have a better technology, advanced technology than 100 years ago. So we think we can better fight against uh, this virus than 100 years ago. So the things changing very dramatically in a very short term, in very uh, high pressure. The people start to fear. Uh, it's by psychological uh, issue is, is normal because sometimes when people don't uh, feel they are under control, uh, everything is out of control, they start to panic and they start to uh, fear. 
uh, there, in the middle of the picture shows some 5G towers is burned. Uh, only in UK, around uh, 77, uh, even more uh, towers, 5G towers is, is bended because people think, by uh, influenced by some rumors, the 5G tower will transmit uh, the virus. Obviously, it's, it's, um, it's not true. But when some rumors uh, start, the people start to, to try to uh, think about it. Uh, this phenomenon uh, is not uh, new. Uh, we think 200 years ago when Luddite movement started in UK also, uh, the people think is the uh, machine uh, in the uh, factory take their life, uh, take their job and make their life bad. So they want to destroy the machine to, to recover their normal life, but actually is not a good theory. Uh, even furthermore, in the internet, some some people find some. Uh, I think it's just a joke. The people think some coincidence between the uh, introduction about the mobile network uh, technology to some breakout. 2003, a 3G network introduced, SaaS come out, and 2009, uh, 4G introduced in the world, uh, the swine flu breakout. So this year is uh, coronavirus for 5G. So how about 6G? Obviously, this is a joke. It's, a, uh, it's a funny, it's a ridiculous, but uh, you know, so many things happen in one year, you cannot make the things uh, link to each other like this. But uh, to show uh, uh, the people will uh, have a different psychological impact during this uh, dangers of pandem pandemic. We saw uh, the technology company and the technology uh, is very important. It's a lifeline, uh, especially in communications. Uh, like uh, the commissioner of European uh, internal market, Thierry Bourdon, uh, ordered uh, Netflix and uh, YouTube to reduce their high definition service to normal definition service. So we lo they lowered down the priority of uh, uh, entertainment to prioritize some uh, more important service like uh, healthcare service, online service, and uh, working, online working or online education service. Uh, make them uh, the benefits to save the benefits from the uh, filming to uh, other services. Uh, all around the world, not only O2 has a suffering uh, pressure uh, to, uh, during this period. Uh, Huawei support 300 different uh, operators in the world to maintain their network uh, stabilities and increase uh, the network bandwidth, uh, increase the capacity of the network to better uh, support the people uh, dramatically increasing the uh, needs during the pandemic. Uh, you cannot imagine uh, how difficult the people are locked down in the small apartment, uh, you know, especially in China, the apartment is not so huge. Uh, there's a 50 or 100 square meters for 78 days, the people locked in Wuhan. So uh, the people need to build up the confidence to overcome uh, psychological uh, mentality issues. So artists, uh, like a lot of uh, artists in the world, uh, start to you even they are locked down in their home. They uh, use their art, museum, and the song to help the people rebuild the confidence. Sorry. Okay. Uh, a lot of behaviors and for human and society is changing. The whole city locked down uh, from very crowd to empty. The people start to uh, learning uh, from the case, learning uh, used to learning from internet. We working from a distance, uh, keep the social distance. Our online shopping is very important, uh, especially during the pandemic uh, to reduce the, the, the infections. Uh, the cashless payment, no matter credit card, card, or, or by your watch, by your smartphone, uh, especially the mobile payment uh, is booming, uh, already booming before the, uh, the pandemic. Uh, you know, 2019 in China, there is around uh, 
uh, 70, uh, 87% of the people using uh, mobile payment. But after the pandemic, I strongly believe there will be more than 90% of, of the people will use uh, the cashless payment. Uh, for example, I have 200 yuan in my wallet sleeping almost two years without uh, using it. Uh, I, I keep this 200 yuan is in case my mobile phone uh, out of battery or there is no signal. But unfortunately, during the last two years, I didn't have any chance to use it. A lot of uh, company uh, tech giant uh, collaboration tools is booming, uh, like Zoom 20 times from 10 million to 200 million. Sky, Skype, uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, Cisco, even Huawei, we have our own V-Link system for our internal use for our 190,000 employee use. But during the pandemic, we're offering free of charge to all the uh, SME media enterprise to use uh, as a tools to communicate, to work. Uh, we need more automations. Uh, Example as Huawei smartphone product line is 120 meters. Before it's 86 workers walk, now it's 17, but we want to further reduce uh, to more automations and they can keep more distance and there's less uh, chance to be impact, to infected. So second part, I, uh, for the people uh, not so familiar with Huawei, I want to just uh, introduce a very quick sna snapshot of Huawei. Uh, our founder, Mr. Zhen, uh, founded our company in 1987, uh, 34 years ago, uh, with this very humble apartment. Uh, his office uh, is a living uh, room. Uh, this apartment is still uh, exists in Shenzhen uh, with 3,000 yuan. Uh, we start with a very uh, difficult working environment and we sell the PBX from Hong Kong and we resell in China. But four years later, uh, our suppliers stopped to supply to Huawei and we forced Huawei to start our own R&D and the design and the manufacturing. So that means last year, the, the entity list from the United States government is not the first time uh, we, are, uh, we, are, we are short of supply. <clears throat> With some innovative solutions like DBS or uh, single run, we uh, has a lot of uh, uh, chance to break to all around work, especially Europe, uh, based on the customer needs. Like Vodafone asked us to to just uh, update the software to get uh, the to get the uh, uh, mobile network from 2G to 3G, 3G, 4G to 5G uh, to save their uh, TCO and the CapEx. Uh, so with this uh, customer uh, driven innovations, we uh, build up our capacity of innovations and we uh, entered in the market uh, all around the world. Not only the product and the solutions, we uh, rely on the ser uh, services also. Very uh, difficult areas uh, in the jungle, in the uh, earthquake area, the mountain, uh, very recently, last uh, week uh, in China, we built up the highest 5G site in the Mount Everest in their forward camp. It's a 6,500 meters. Uh, it's the highest uh, 5G site in the, in the planet. So currently, uh, Huawei is uh, now divided with three, four different uh, business group, consumer to uh, 2C business. Carrier and enterprise the focus on the 2B business and we have our cloud uh, and AI uh, business uh, group. Uh, so Huawei, we're always focused on the devices, uh, connectivities and the computing. So this is a three domain we will focus on uh, today and in the future. So the last part of my keynotes, uh, I will show some, uh, some, some examples of how Huawei uh, support uh, and what we are doing uh, during this crisis. The connectivity has never so important. It's not uh, a communication line, it's a lifeline uh, during the crisis. Uh, for example, we uh, establish uh, a network extension for 4G capacity in one day, add a lot of extra capacity card uh, to uh, help the less constructions of the network 
uh, in Wuhan. And uh, the total hospital is built up in nine days, but Huawei, we use three days to build up uh, surrounding the uh, hospi hospital, uh, the 5G network and fiber and a lot of things. And operators, of course, they are doing a very good job also uh, in this, uh, during the pandemic, they, uh, for example, China uh, Mo uh, Unicom sent a 30 billion SMS to alert people to be more cautious. Uh, uh, China uh, Telecom using uh, video conference services free and uh, China Mobile updated their mo uh, home uh, mo uh, broadband. Vodafone International, MTN, internal operators working also uh, to maintain their stabilities of network to uh, help the people to be better connected. A uh, concrete example, <clears throat> after we build up our uh, 5G uh, site uh, near these uh, hospitals, we uh, install a Huawei uh, a camera, a wireless Huawei camera, and uh, uh, and broadcast the, the construction process uh, 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 on live uh, in the uh, internet. Uh, not only the people in China for, uh, and all the world uh, can uh, watch the live progress about this uh, hospital build up because it is not only the progress, it's build up the confidence about the people. So simultaneously, there are 15 million people online to watch out the progress. So uh, with 5G uh, capacity, uh, the one of the major uh, uh, advantage is that wire short latency is not only the bandwidth. So the remote control, uh, like for example, ultra uh, sonic uh, scan could be done remotely. And a lot of uh, uh, doctor or experts from outside of Wuhan uh, can, uh, have the discussion, collaboration, diagnose uh, to help the doctors uh, in Wuhan, uh, in Beijing, Shanghai, Xi'an. They, they use the daily presence or video conference uh, system uh, to, to work together and to diagnose uh, the difficult uh, case together and to better so, um, save the life of the patient in Wuhan. So this kind of as a traditional mode uh, resort uh, uh, exposed to the high risk uh, on-site on -site risk. Uh, a concrete uh, uh, example is uh, how technology can help to increase the efficiency of the, of the, uh, the, 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 the doctors uh, before the doctors want to uh, diagnose a, a CT scan report they need around 10 to 12 minutes to analyze all the images of the CT result because there's so many images they want to check one by one. And after that, they need to two minutes to, uh, to write down the, 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 the report. Uh, but with AI uh, support, uh, only 10 seconds, the AI will uh, uh, summarize all the key points and the doctors only use two minutes around to confirm or reject this, all those uh, AI suggestions. And then uh, 30, minutes, 30 seconds to generate the report. So versus 14 minutes by human being uh, with AI uh, only 160 seconds. So a lot of time is saving, a lot of uh, people um, increase a lot of efficiency, uh, reduce the, uh, the, the the infection uh, risk for the patient to waiting outside or inside of the hospital. Uh, 5G uh, with a 5G enabled uh, temperature checking uh, is very massively uh, deployed in China also. Uh, the most dangerous uh, place uh, is airport, uh, metro, railway station, the port, because in the very limited space, so many people uh, crowded in the in the in the small space, uh, uh, will increase a lot of uh, chance to be infected. 
So, but of course we want to check uh, in these areas, the people's temperatures to, to check if they have some symptom uh, or not. Uh, if you use a traditional human way to check one by one, uh, there, of course, there will, be, will cause uh, huge conjectures about the flu of the people, passenger. Uh, there will increase a lot of the possibility to be infected. But with, uh, with uh, uh, the uh, 5G-based uh, 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 camera uh, to testing the temperature system, uh, one minute we can test uh, 200 people. So the people don't need to slow down. They are walking uh, in the distance and in the normal uh, uh, speed to pass by the checking point and the people uh, could be tested uh, directly. And uh, I think this is uh, dramatically, uh, massively uh, deployed in all the checkpoints in China. Uh, our case uh, always follow uh, almost two months uh, their online school. Uh, Huawei in two weeks, we, uh, uh, because we, we, before we don't uh, has uh, enough uh, capacity. We two weeks we uh, install another seven thousand servers to uh, enable fifty million students to online to in simultaneous online, uh, and we collaborate with one hundred education partners uh, and established a, a online a learn anytime education alliance to help uh, the people uh, students to study uh, online. So uh, another uh, 5G-enabled uh, uh, services is to further reduce the risk and the workflow about the nurses and um, uh, the doctors in uh, hospitals is uh, the small uh, robot uh, connected by 5G could be uh, very uh, efficient to deliver some product, some goods, medical uh, supplies to the different uh, areas. Uh, in some dangerous infected areas. And in the same time, they can uh, de-infect uh, the areas and uh, help the uh, doctor and the nurses to working in uh, some safer uh, environment. Uh, so we use this automatic robot, uh, 5G based, to, uh, uh, to help uh, the doctors to have a safer working environment. Uh, today, uh, we are facing a lot of challenge, uh, macro environment challenge like uh, climate changing, uh, biodiversity loss, uh, tsunami, earthquake, uh, fire, and in the micro side uh, with some cancer like this time the virus. Uh, we think it's not, the, it's not the last time in the future we were always facing this kind of huge challenge for mankind. It's not only for one country to another. This one is for the mankind. But how we can better fight against this, uh, uh, these issues, the only thing is we can uh, rely is the collaboration between the nations and between the peoples, between the uh, companies, and uh, rely on the technology advantage, uh, advance. So for Huawei part, uh, we want to move our innovation from 1.0 to 2.0. That's been from customer need based uh, one to N uh, technology solution innovations to uh, vision driven uh, fundamental research, try to break through some uh, theoretical uh, barriers uh, to better uh, serve, uh, response, the challenge uh, for all the humankind. We uh, dis, uh, engage each year our R&D project, we allocate 30% to the fundamental research, another 70% uh, for the engineering and the customer need uh, driven uh, solutions, innovations, yeah. So uh, it's on my last page, uh, the, the lens apart, we are in under a shared sky. Uh, let's stay together, stay strong, uh, collaborate together, and uh, have a better future together. So thank you, thank you, Michael. Uh, this is my, uh, uh, my, my uh, keynotes.
So I thank you very much. Sharing. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so at this stage, guys, you should all imagine that there is um, some place, uh, a fireplace, and that Carl and I are sitting around it because this is a fireside chat. Uh, but what I'd like to do is ask a few questions uh, because I, we have heard here. Um, quite a bit about the technology, and you told us how Huawei is moving in the technology even further upstream. And you're like, look, we want to be more ambitious. We want to push the technological frontier and go to more exciting stuff. On the other hand, if we go to the broader theme, and we go to you know what you were discussing at the beginning, you're speaking about technology that is able to change people's lives. Now, in order to change people's lives, you need more than bandwidth. You need more than the technical abilities that 5G does over 4G and the benefits that it has. You need to see how it combines with some of the downstream users to change people's lives. So can you give us a bit of a sense of how uh, you see the technology that is supported by Huawei and other companies that work in that to create these new um, uh, use cases that can have a material impact. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Professor uh, Michael. So uh, for this question, I think I have a several points uh, to, to share. Uh, you know, as I mentioned uh, in the keynotes, uh, in very short terms, with very high pressures, the people's life is dramatically changed during the pandemic. A lot of uh, new uh, requirement and new uh, needs, uh, demands, uh, is uh, creating, uh, uh, inspired uh, by the people. Uh, we think probably after pandemic, uh, those needs or, uh, or requirement uh, probably will uh, rebound to a normal stage, but uh, the people uh, has a memory and they has a hot bit. Uh, the people start to use to uh, do online shopping, online uh, mobile payment, uh, the uh, educations, so uh, probably they will continue. And uh, in this crisis, the people seem to uh, have uh, adopted uh, more quickly the emergent uh, technology. Like uh, in China, a lot of old people uh, start to uh, use mobile payment before they always use cash. But during the pandemic, they force them to adapt the new, uh, new things and they uh, even purchase uh, some uh, fresh produce uh, in the uh, to learn to 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 the uh, online shopping uh, uh, platform like Alibaba or Jingdong. So even after the pandemic, uh, this convenient, uh, more convenient uh, mode of life, they will continue. I think uh, not only the healthcare industry, uh, the education industry, uh, education, uh, uh, entertainment. Uh, moving, shopping, uh, we're, uh, we're, we're dramatically change, uh, change their, their user behaviors. Uh, secondly, I think all the traditional uh, industry uh, has more uh, depend tied to the ICT services, uh, uh, FCT services. Uh, you know, <coughs> uh, all the industry is going to uh, digitalizations. Uh, this is a trend. Uh, third one, I think, uh, even uh, this pandemic, of course, will cause a uh, huge uh, recession, uh, huge economy recessions, like in China, the Q1 uh, for the past uh, 30 years, even more. Uh, first time we have negative 6.8% uh, GDP uh, negative growth. Uh, but uh, some old industry will disappear, some new one will appear. Uh, the all industry has forced to uh, the digitalization, automation, AI, and those kind of new uh, updated uh, industry after this pandemic probably will uh, uh, adapt more the uh, uh, the new situations. One concrete example I saw uh, last week uh, with uh, one museum. Uh, in northeast uh, west uh, China uh, is the Dunhuang uh, Museum. You know, in the traditional way, normal way, uh, they has a lot of wall painting in the cave, or ancient painting. Uh, try to uh, pr better protect uh, the museum, the paint, 
uh, even the K uh, have a limited space, the people only uh, can get a small group to enter in. And for five or 10 minutes uh, watching, and you need to go out because a lot of people waiting outside. But now they are going into a digitalization, VR, 4K, 8K, uh, high definitions to broadcast online. So people can enjoy to watching as much as you want, uh, as you can. Uh, in uh, in your uh, in your home uh, to uh, to benefit this uh, uh, historical uh, magic uh, mm -hmm. museum, yeah. This Terrific. Is, uh, and, uh, new, new norm. Mm -hmm. uh, so so I hear you say that this is a forced episode of digital transformation, whether we like it or not, at the level of society. You know, you, you can even argue that some of the past pandemics uh, did that. You know, arguably it was SARS and MERS that. Uh, uh, allowed a new type of commerce to be born and companies like Alibaba to start becoming important as the traditional uh, intermediaries were being pushed out. And I agree with you that we're going to see some companies that will wither and others that are going to be successful. Um, now, let me go from the high level to a little bit more operational stuff that I think is going to be exciting for our attendees as well. Um, one of the things that I take away from what you said is that you need to think about how you can more closely connect between those that provide the user experience, the application of the, the technology, the downstream people, and the upstream people which probably yeah. means that you can't say, hey, I don't know, I'm just selling superior technology because I do all that cool technology stuff that in the past was done in the States, but now we're doing some seriously good research, so we're gonna commercialize, we're gonna be fine. You need to start connecting these interdependencies and you need to link with the people downstream. Now, how does that work and how tightly do you need to integrate with the people downstream? Do you have any specific examples of um, uh, the way that this can work? Yeah. <clears throat> Professor, I, I think uh, from our point of view, if you only sell uh, equipment and uh, solutions, even your sales is over 100 billions, uh, you are a, great, a big company, you are a strong company, but only when you can build up a very strong ecosystem, a lot of partners, a lot of people working with you, and then you become a great company. So now Huawei want to transfer ourselves from a big company to a great company. Uh, a concrete uh, case share with you is, uh, you know, a lot of people mentioned Huawei uh, entered in the smart car industry, like intelligent automotive uh, industry. Uh, a lot of people has a lot of questions of how we want to make a car, how we uh, <laughs> as a competitors for Volkswagen in the future. So. Uh, so we ha want to uh, have a clear uh, definition, a clear uh, boundary, uh, how we do uh, define how, what our position are, what our uh, target market. For in this smart car uh, industry, uh, very clear, why we will not make a car. This is uh, very clear. We, this is our boundary. We will not make a car. Instead, we will commit to serve as an uh, enabler uh, for the added component for the intelligent connect vehicle. That means we are the suppliers for the Volkswagen, for Mercedes, and for BMW, for all the car makers. When they want to transform their traditional car to the smart car, Huawei is a provider. Huawei is a very reliable uh, supplier. I think this one is mentioned by our rotating chairman uh, very clearly. Uh, he quote uh, his uh, face Huawei is only uh, we know we don't make a com traditional component for the vehicle. We focus on the added component uh, for the intelligent car. Uh, that means we want to, for example, we want to uh, for the connected vehicle platform uh, provide MTC mobile data center on the car as a brain as a super computer to to uh, to control the car. Uh, V2X vehicle uh, infrastructure solution system, uh, vehicle communication system, uh, even the battery management system. So this is the, all these components what we will do and, and we will support the traditional car maker for their transformations. Well, you will support them, but at the same time, 
you need to agree the terms in which it happens. And that can either be bilateral or that can be through standards and through convergence if you work with a group of different suppliers. Because if you say, look, these needs require us to not say, I don't care what will happen downstream, but I do care, but I want to say, this is what I can give and this is how you're going to connect it. These questions of standards of interoperability and of technology coordination become paramount. So in order to see the benefits of all of this technology, we need to think about coordination. Now, uh, we are living in a rather complicated world where coordination, uh, certain, both international coordination and intercompany coordination is not necessarily the order of the day once you start reading the newspapers. What is your sense of the difficulties, um, promises and challenges of this coordination that is required for these ecosystems that you mentioned to be able to be successful? Yeah, <clears throat> for our standard of view, uh, of course, we uh, call uh, global uh, collaborations and unify one world, one standards. Uh, here, probably how uh, to, to, to answer the question, probably I will give you uh, two examples. One is good, one is bad. Uh, for example, for the good, uh, latest uh, example is uh, we read the news uh, during the pandemic uh, the two tech giants, uh, Google and um, and iPhone, first they start working together as the biggest uh, yeah. competitors in the world. <laughs> Normally they were not working together, but under these huge pressures and huge uh, responsibilities for for this for the society, so they working together to co-create a, a contact tracing uh, system. Uh, actually, it's, it's a simple, uh, not so difficult. Uh, they will build up together an uh, API uh, uh, so iPhone and Android phone can communicate with each other, use a Bluetooth-based uh, technology. Uh, they will build up the API. They will not go to uh, the, the, the detailed development of the APP. Uh, but they offering this API to different country uh, like in France, they are ongoing to build up the stop COVID, this APP, and over this month, and probably will launch the beginning of next month. So the people is download and install these uh, applications and can detect automatically by uh, Bluetooth uh, the people surrounding you, uh, how long distance you meet together, how long time you meet each other's, when one people report uh, by their uh, um, themselves uh, is infected, if they wish, they will report this information to the servers, and then the server can uh, give you an alert to mention you are in danger. So this kind of things is a very good collaboration to show uh, how the tech giant can working together to change to to help the people to better protect. Bad example is. Uh, uh, in our industry, you know, uh, in the telecom industry, uh, when we are talking 2G, 3G, 4G, uh, we always in a divided uh, stand, uh, standards. Uh, 2G, we have GSM, we have a CDMA. 3G, we have CDMA, CDMA 2000, TDS, CDMA. In, even in 4G, we have FDD, LTE, TDD, LTE. So always separate. This cause not only a huge burden uh, about operator to build up their network, they, 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 they only can have a choice. For example, in 3G era, three operators in China, each one choose one standard. They cannot use the same phone. If I have the phone in uh, China mobile, I cannot get the same card work in my phone. I need to switch uh, my phone to another CDMA phone in, the, in China telecom. So, mm -hmm. It's a huge uh, yeah. issue for, for the people also. Uh, yeah. it's, it's not good. Uh, no, I, I get it, but, but I want, that, right. will, yeah. that will take us a little bit for, more into the details because you've mentioned um, sort of an interesting world, word. You mentioned Google uh, and we mentioned ecosystems. So let me try to put these things together and be a little politically incorrect. Up until recently, you guys said, look, we're happy to do the phones, we're happy to do the technology, and we're happy to simply participate in the Google-sponsored Android ecosystem. We don't need to think about applications. We don't need to think about operating software. Unfortunately, President Trump doesn't like you. And he's like, I'm not going to allow you to use American suppliers. But mostly, and that's the interesting thing for the downstream user, I'm not going to allow you to go and use Google. 
Google, of course, says, oh, my God, we don't want that. We want them to use us. And they're trying to pressure the government and they're giving some reprieves and we're patchwork. But you guys decided that enough, we can't rely on them. And that now takes us to what is going to happen uh, on, in the new ecosystem that you have to build, because a big part of what you do is the ecosystem of all these apps that connect to what people do, which essentially means whether the phone is useful for them or not. So uh, how will you be able to survive in this new environment without Google? Tell us about the HMS and our harmony and all of that fun stuff. Okay. <clears throat> Now, uh, this ecosystem is very uh, key for Huawei uh, consumer business, uh, especially also of, uh, out of China. Uh, for now, uh, I can uh, sh uh, say that Huawei is still very committed to the, uh, the Huawei devices business uh, outside of China. Uh, actually, we, we are not so focused on our market share. We are number one, we are number two. Uh, but actually, we are number two last year, even for this Q1, we're still the number two in the world uh, for the delivery uh, around 49 million shipment in the Q1 uh, this year, even with the very challenge uh, situations. But we are not focused on the market share. We are focused how our devices and our system can bring the value to the end user and consumers. Uh, through our innovative solution, hardware and software. And uh, Huawei, yes. Uh, yeah, secondly, uh, I think Huawei, uh, we ha always never change our, our mind. Uh, we embrace, embrace as collaborations. In case we can get the supply, no matter components from US, all the software collaboration with the with uh, Google, we of course we will continue. Uh, last year we still buy uh, 18.7 billion uh, U.S. components, uh, of course legally uh, with uh, with U.S. suppliers. Uh, but of course we want to uh, uh, keep the choice of alternative solutions. That means in case we cannot use, we have a, uh, alternative solutions. Uh, this is why uh, Huawei developed our uh, APP gallery. Uh, you know, this is a top three APP distribution platform uh, like uh, APP store or others. Uh, we deploy this uh, APP galleries in 170 country already, uh, serve more than 400 uh, to 500 million people, active users. Uh, only last year, uh, 2019 uh, APP gallery have uh, 200 billion time of download. Uh, it's a very uh, big number. Uh, and this year we want to, uh, with of course, with uh, partners together to build up another uh, 2,000 uh, to quick uh, ap applications, quick APP. That means. Even you don't want, uh, don't need to download. You directly uh, and save your storage memory. You can directly use this app without install, without download, uh, without install. So they build a lot of convenience for the people. Uh, not only the app gallery. Uh, we are working very hard with our HMS core, Huawei Mobile Service core. Uh, this is a key for us uh, to working with the developers nowadays. Uh, there are around 1.4 million uh, global uh, developers working for Huawei we, with us. Uh, we share more uh, incentive with them, more uh, percentage of incentive with them. Uh, and uh, not only the individual developers, with more than 800 ecosystem partners working with Huawei uh, HMS uh, ecosystem. Uh, HMS is a developer a co-development toolkit. We're providing uh, some toolkits like uh, photograph toolkits, uh, AI learning toolkits, mapping toolkits, uh, account, uh, analytic toolkits to help uh, the developers to better, uh, more efficient de developing their uh, APP uh, in our uh, environment. Uh, nowadays, there is 60,000 uh, APP available uh, based on HMS. 
So we will continue to uh, this uh, strategy, uh, uh, embrace more and more partners and developers uh, working with us, uh, especially the European uh, developers uh, and partners. Uh, each country, each region, uh, we will focus on their own needs, uh, all applications uh, in different regions. Terrific. And I, I, yeah. the, our 20 minutes are pretty much gone, and I think that we could go for at least another 20. Uh, but I'd like <laughs> to take a look at some of the questions that came. Um, I'll just pick one which builds exactly on what you were saying, because essentially you're saying that, look, um, we are starting our own ecosystem. It'll be complementary, and to some extent it'll be a substitute to Google if we can't work with Google. Not our choice, but we are committed to creating the apps that will support it. Um, and one of the questions that I see here is, I'm interested in the HMS ecosystem. What are your specific plans or programs for building up the ecosystem with partners around the world and the UK? Because, you know, domestic market, each mobile phone company has their separate app store in addition uh, to, you know, the big providers, but at least in the West, we have, you know, the more, the big dominance of primarily mm -hmm. Apple, if you've got an Apple phone or Android for most of the others. So here we have a new structure. How will you work with these guys who are outside China? And the emphasis is in uh, your ecosystem sort of plans with the partners around the world and in the UK, as the question came from that. Yeah. <clears throat> um... Uh, this ecosystem is very important. Uh, we, uh, the advantage for Huawei to developing this uh, ecosystem is we have a huge uh, home-based uh, home market. Its biggest market is China. Of course, in the same time, we have a huge uh, uh, inst uh, install-based uh, customers. That, that means uh, there is more, around uh, 400 to 500 million uh, Huawei smartphone users. This huge uh, user base will help the developers to, uh, to, to incentive the developers to do more job uh, with us. Uh, concretely speaking with European, uh, we already start with a lot of, uh, as I mentioned, 800 uh, ecosystem partners. Uh, more than half is coming from European company. Uh, you know, the very famous uh, mapping uh, uh, a company like uh, here we here here we go, uh, or TomTom, Tom, uh, we are working together, and uh, the uh, in a searching uh, engine uh, is Quant. You know, it's a French and uh, a Germany uh, company. There is an old uh, searching engine, uh, European searching engine. Uh, of course, there is some young Dex. There, uh, even in UK, we are working with. Uh, the news group, uh, all the app, uh, app view uh, available in our uh, ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So step by step, we want uh, to build up this ecosystem together with European developers and the partners. Uh, you know, European has a high uh, value added uh, market. There is a lot of talent, a lot of needs, and we will ensure. Uh, that uh, this uh, ecosystem is totally opened, is not for Huawei, is for the whole uh, society, uh, is not uh, is European and China working together, uh, of course, with uh, other regions, the Middle East, uh, Latin Americans, uh, even the uh, US working together uh, to build up these uh, alternative solutions for, for the people. Uh, this is the aim for our Harmony OS. Mm -hmm. I see. Now, uh, in the interest of time, I'll just read you some wacky questions that came to me and have absolutely no clue about uh, what the answer is. One says, I've recently read that Elon Musk is piloting, piloting internet service with satellite links. There's some other people who are trying oh. to do that in satellite links as well. Um, many say that that will be a threat to 5G. Do you think it's the case? And how will that impact Huawei's strategy for R&D investment in 6G or future technologies? So, wacky question your way. <laughs> Actually, uh, even Alimax, I remember himself already mentioned uh, he is not compete with operators. He's a complementary and working together with operators. Uh, uh, actually, uh, as I'm, my memory, uh, is, uh, his project is not the first project in, the, uh, in this kind of project. Uh, you know, before there's a Google's Loom 
project, but is uh, with a balloon, is not in the space satellite. And the SoftBank has uh, a project named uh, One One Web. Uh, they even launched a 74 satellite uh, in the space. Uh, Elon Musk uh, planned to launch more than uh, 42,000 uh, satellites in the world and already launched uh, 300 or something like this. Uh, mm -hmm. Each time, they, each rocket 60 uh, something uh, to, to the space. It's very exciting. Uh, even, I think, not only him, Amazon is ongoing to get some uh, similar project. Uh, for us, we welcome this and we are uh, inspired by this kind of uh, innovative solutions for them because this one is good for the human humanity. You know, how difficult we know, uh, there is a documentary for China, uh, CCTV, to mention how difficult we build up our hi highest 5G in the mountain Everest, 60,500 meters. The fiber, the generators that the we build up, the people uh, feel sick, uh, how difficult in that rural, uh, uh, tough environment. If there is a satellite, uh, so all this kind of mountain could be uh, uh, covered. But mm -hmm. we think uh, the hot, hot pot, uh, high, high density part, uh, carrier and we play a very important role. But for the rural and uh, mountain uh, uh, in the sea, uh, oceans, uh, island, those kind of things, um, space uh, satellite can play a very complementary uh, role. So it's uh, it's not uh, com compete. What we think is a is a is a solution. Uh, complementary solutions can help each other. So you'd be happy to leave Elon Musk to play with the rainforests and the big mountains uh, and you guys concentrate in some of the more densely populated area. Although, as you said, Amazon Sidewalk and others are trying to start denting into this area soon. So I think we're going to have some interesting fight between different ecosystems. But I think that we have time for one uh, last question. And before we see... Um, uh, satellites covering uh, Everest, I think that we will see Internet of Things that are going to transform how we do stuff. So um, how do you see the competition between ecosystems of Internet of Things? Are we going to see platform wars there? How do you expect that Huawei will engage itself when we move from, you know, having our devices Yeah, I guess that this is a P30 um, to uh, having um, uh, things that are embedded in pretty much daily objects. How will competition look like and what will Huawei's role be in that world? Yeah, <clears throat> so uh, for the previous questions, uh, because the two architectures of network is different, one is in satellite, one is in the earth. So we welcome all kinds of uh, competitions and uh, challenge. And we, with those kind of healthy challenge and competitions, we can better serve the planet, uh, mankind. So it's very calm. Uh, for the IoT part, uh, more and more uh, with introduction of IoT, uh, there is a CG Fox uh, before there is a uh, there is another uh, NB IoT. So a lot of things happened uh, in this uh, domain. One of the key factors of 5G is uh, in one square meters, there's more than millions millions of uh, devices could be uh, in one cell tower's capacity. Uh, your smart meters, smart metering, uh, smart uh, everything is connected. Your your glass, uh, your watch. So, uh, how to uh, better uh, connect it, those things together? This is one uh, issue for the traditional uh, uh, operating system cannot solve. Uh, you know, they are based on one certain type of devices. For example, it's, it's, it's a smartphone. You, you use a smartphone. Uh, when you, uh, it's iPhone uh, or uh, Android. When you change to uh, a watch, uh, you need to develop a new uh, OS, no matter iPhone or uh, Android. When you change a smart glass, uh, smart glass, you need to develop a new uh, OS for these devices. So each hardware introduced, you need a new operation system. But for Huawei, we want to build up a new generation uh, oriented uh, operating system. It's 
Harmony OS. Almost slightly uh, the same ideas are uh, similar with the future uh, of Google for their next generation. But Huawei, uh, this one is already uh, launched with our smart screen. Uh, some kind of uh, our devices is already used uh, this new generation uh, OS. That means uh, when you uh, switch one uh, devices to another, you don't need to develop a new type of uh, operating system. Uh, this operating system can automatically adapt to the, the, the hardware configurations and, uh, uh, and generate a, a, a suitable uh, operating system for that. And furthermore, when the user or developer uh, developing uh, one app to one kind of uh, one kind of uh, devices and uh, can automatically use to all kind of devices uh, iot devices uh, will bring uh, more efficiency to the end user uh, it's a new uh, yeah. new things we think we we want to moving and working forward in that directions Terrific. And that tells us that although we're going to have innovation, we're also going to have intra-ecosystem competition and inter-ecosystem competition, which is going to be making the world more interested. Uh, it would be lovely to be able to speak some more about that, but time is up. And what uh, I want to do on behalf of the school, and I guess I'm going to be joined by the um, for our host in a moment, is thank Carl for not only his presentation, but his openness in answering all of our questions not only my own curiosity, but that of the participants. I hope that you have all found it interesting. And again, thank you very much for joining us. Um, and this is episode one of a number of really interesting things to happen in the mobile space and in the space of downstream applications uh, of the people that do it and the ecosystems that are involved. So um, thank you very much. So from me and um, um, in, in Athens today and Carl and Shenzhen, it is thank you and goodbye.